distal femoral physeal fractures in kids. So tested not quite as commonly as distal femur fractures. We see seven times tested on the OIT in about the last 10 years and six times on self-assessment exams. These distal femoral physeal fractures tend to occur in adolescents and you don't want to confuse them with collateral ligament injuries. The pathophysiology usually involves direct trauma with some degree of rotation, usually a valgus type force or hyperextension. The most common fracture pattern is a Salter II. It's important to remember that the distal femur epiphysis is the first epiphysis in the body to ossify. It's also important to know that both heads of the gastrocnemius and the plantaris will insert just proximal to the physis. And so this is going to cause flexion of the distal fragment when the fracture line is proximal to the muscle insertion. You have to protect the distal femoral physis during fracture treatment. So remember, leg growth continues till about 16 years of age in boys and 14 in girls. And that's usually about 23 millimeters a year. And most of that comes from the knee. So remember in kids, most of the growth in the upper extremity is away from the elbow, whereas in the lower extremity, it's at the knee. Just a little bit at the proximal femur, three millimeters a year. The most at the distal femur, nine millimeters. A little bit at the proximal tibia, six millimeters. And just a small amount less, five millimeters at the distal tibia. The collateral ligaments attach just distal to that physis. And so often the physis is weaker. And so the stress is taken from the collaterals to the physis, and it's the physis that breaks. Remember the blood supply? The femoral artery is going through the adductor canal and then into the popliteal artery just distal or uh, just posterior to the distal femur. And so an injury to the popliteal artery can be very important and result in the loss of lower limb viability. The physical examination of these fractures is important to do a neurovascular exam because of that proximity of the popliteal artery and also t focal tenderness. You want to identify that they're tender over the physis so that if your radiographs are not confirmatory, you still maintain suspicion for a distal femur physeal injury. The best views are AP lateral and oblique views. Stress fractures are really no longer indicated in kids. The reason for that is you may cause a physeal injury by stressing the physis. So that's no longer the answer and shouldn't be done in practice. Instead, if you're concerned about a Salter 1 and you want to limit your immobilization, an MRI can tell you whether it's a Salter 1 or not. Ultrasound can sometimes confirm the physeal fracture. And if it's intraarticular, a CT scan will, de will define that for you. Angiograms can be helpful for a vascular injury particularly if you have fractures like this one where there is a posterior spike on an anterior displaced fracture. Let's look at a test question. We have a 10-year-old boy who injures his knee. He can't bear weight. He's tender right over the distal femoral physis. And we have radiographs of the affected knee in figures A and B, and then radiographs of the unaffected knee in figures C and D. I'll show you the radiographs on the next slide. The treatment options are a hinged knee brace, a cast, close reduction, open reduction in pins, or open reduction in plates. And so here's figures A and B. We don't see any displaced fractures when comparing to C and D. There could be a hint of physeal widening, but nothing obvious. But remember, the stem said he was tender directly over the physis. So therefore, the treatment's going to be cast immobilization and early follow-up. We're treating him for a possible Salter 1 of a distal femur. Um, this is a rare indication for non-operative treatment of a distal femoral physeal fracture. They're almost always treated operatively, um, and that includes any displaced distal femur fracture. So here's the indication for non-operative treatment. That's a stable, non-displaced distal physeal fracture, and that's it. But you need to follow them closely. Definitely see them at one to two weeks to make sure that fracture has not displaced. Here's another question, 13-year-old boy, can't bear weight. Radiographs show a Salter II fracture of the distal femur. What's the best treatment? Hinge knee brace, long leg cast, skeletal traction, closed reduction in percutaneous fixation, or open reduction with plate fixation. 
And the best answer is number four, closed reduction in percutaneous fixation. And that percutaneous fixation is preferably going to be lag screws ac across that large uh, metaphyseal fragment. The problem with answer number five, plate fixation, is you wouldn't want to place, apply a plate both proximal and distal to the physis. So closed reduction and percutaneous pinning followed by casting is a great option for Salter 1 and sometimes Salter 2 fractures if that metaphyseal fragment isn't large enough. Here's one uh, pin construct where the pins are left out distally. The one concern from that is that the pins are intra-articular and so if the pin sites get infected, then the joint may get infected as well. So the alternative is to place the pins and leave them out proximally so that they're not coming out through the joint. Also remember, avoid mul multiple attempts at reduction across the physis, similar to other physeal injuries. The reduction maneuver is mostly traction with a little bit of manipulation. And then when you do place pins across the physis, you'll want to use smooth, smooth pins to decrease that risk of physeal arrest. Take those pins out about three to four weeks later. If that Salter II fragment's big enough, it's a better idea to use lag screws and just avoid the physis altogether. But remember, these have a high rate of growth arrest, so you want to follow them closely afterwards for deformity. Salter III and Salter IV fractures should be reduced anatomically at the articular surface, and open reduction is also indicated if you have an irreducible Salter I or Salter II fracture. So here's a nice diagram. Salter I treated with smooth cross pins, Salter II with lag screws across the metaphyseal fragment, Salter III with the screw across the epiphysis, and then Salter IV with screws across both. Let's look at a test question. We've got a 13-year-old boy who was closed, reduced, and casted at a rural hospital. So this is um, not the way we would typically do it. If, it. if the distal femur fracture requires reduction, it's better to go ahead and fix it as well at that time to avoid loss of alignment because these are inherently unstable. But comes back five weeks later and looks like we got lucky. The fracture is still well aligned, but what do you need to tell the family about? Physeal growth acceleration, recurrent fractures, angular deformity, arterial injury, or compartment syndrome. And the best answer is angular deformity. And the reason for that is up to 50% of cases are going to have some type of physeal arrest after a distal femoral physeal fracture. So that's the most important complication to discuss, and that's limb length discrepancy or angular deformity from that physeal disturbance. It does correlate to some extent with the fracture pattern. 36% of Salter 1s, 58% of Salter 2s, 49% of Salter 3s, 64% of Salter 4s. And we can prevent that or decrease that with anatomic physeal alignment and then close follow-up to detect any problems you see. When a physeal arrest does occur, you want to predict what the ultimate discrepancy is. If that discrepancy is less than 2 centimeters and there's no significant angulation, you can observe the physeal arrest. But if the predicted discrepancy is more than 2 but less than 6 centimeters, think about epiphysiodesis of the contralateral distal femur or prox and or proximal tibia. If you detect a growth arrest early, a physeal bridge excision or bar excision is appropriate when it's less than 50% of the physeal size and there's more than two years of growth remaining. This is one paper which helps us predict the outcomes of physeal fractures of the distal femur. Arcator and others reviewed uh, patients with non-operative and operative treatment of distal femur fractures. And what they found was that fracture severity and fracture displacement correlated with the higher rate of complications. Here's an 11-year-old boy who underwent surgical intervention of the fracture I'll show on the next slides. His physical examination now shows 5 degrees of varus, and a CT scan shows a bar involving 25% of the physis. The remainder of the physis is open. What's the most appropriate treatment? Observation, osteotomy, guided growth, physeal bridge resection with polymethylmethacrylate, and distal femoral epiphysiodesis. And so here's the films. We see he had a Salter II, and then now we see that a portion, if 
of that growth plate is closed. It actually looks like a lot of the growth plate is closed, but we'll trust the test question which shows us that only 50% of the growth plate is closed. And so therefore the answer is Fisial bridge resection. Remember, bar resection is appropriate if the bar is less than 50% of the entire physis and there's more than two years of growth remaining. It's definitely a technique that works. If you do it, um, be sure to have uh, what you intend to use for interposition. So the cranioplast is definitely available. It can be hard to find at some hospitals. Most pediatric orthopedists have used before and uh, can give you the reference number if you need to order it. Definitely get it in advance though. Don't try to find it on the day of. Complications of distal femoral physeal fractures or septic arthritis. Remember those intraarticular pins which are left out distally can have a risk of that. And then also popliteal artery injury and compartment syndrome. It's certainly rare, but can happen with anterior displacement of the epiphysis and a posterior displaced um, metaphysis which a large, with a large spike like I showed earlier. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.